Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, before we begin, uh, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the time that we have again this morning to open your word, to receive light for our feet and strength for the day. We ask that you can uh, be with each person, that you can fill our hearts and our minds with your spirit, that we can discern clearly uh, the truths for this time, and that our characters can be changed. You know, Lord, that um, there is a struggle that exists in the hearts of each one of us in this world. We ask, Lord, that um, Christ can come and uh, conquer self in us. We ask, Lord, that um, as we look at judges, once again, you can correct anything that we have that's in error and that you can reveal light to us. Be with each person and in, be with us in this meeting, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Um, so the struggle that we we're having, yeah, I was. I'm not sure if you understand exactly uh, what I was trying to say. Um, so with with uh, Abimelech and Jotham, we have these. Okay, I see. For some reason, it's not working. There we go. Um, we have these two lines, which we put together, which is this 777 uh, prophetic mirror. So this, this mirror, um, it contains these periods of 777 days. And you can see that uh, if we go from September 23, 2017, that's when I introduce July 18th as the symbol of the prediction before midnight. Um, there's going to be 777 days to November 9th, and then another 777 days to December 25th, 2021. So be, prior to that, there's 183 days that's in the middle, and the middle of that is June 22nd, um, 2017. That's going to be in the center of this whole structure that you see. So this structure is obviously not balanced in that sense. It's not uh, proportional. Um, and then there's two periods of 777 days, starting on December 21st, 2012, to February 6, 2015. And then the other one goes to May 24th, uh, uh, 2017, right? So those two periods of 777 days aren't shown on this chart, but we have them on other charts. Now, what we're saying is that uh, these are lines of failed predictions. And, and yet God is leading us through this history. Parminder had made a time prediction in 2012. And uh, that time prediction, of course, uh, was fanaticism and called out so by Jeff and also failed. That is, he predicted the Sunday law in 2014. And so we're saying that this line is addressing that. And that is Parminder uh, is clandestinely working at uh, taking over this movement. So whether it's when he gets rebuffed by Jeff, being called a fanatic for his time setting, and that sets him on his course, I think it's before that. I think that he already had an agenda, which was a liberal agenda, and that he was um, pretending to be a conservative. But he had ideas that he knew would not be accepted by this movement, but he believed somehow that he's the one to bring in these liberal ideas. And 
um, whether he really understood exactly how he was going to do that or not. Um, definitely, once he had his time setting rebuffed, then he's he's definitely having to work underground in order to to bring about his goals. So when that happens, I'm in this movement already, and God is because I'm studying chronology. He's giving information that is going to undermine Parminder's work. Of course, we don't know about that. There's no intention, you know, that Parminder's teaching some kind of error that I have to undermine. You know, and and I accept Parminder, you know, when Jeff accepts him. So to me, that's not really an issue. I'm going to meet Parminder in 2015. Um because I'm going to meet Mark Bruce in 2014 when he comes to the camp meeting in Alberta. And then Parminder comes the next year in 2015. Um, so, and at that time, you know, I've been watching some of Parminder's videos. I find his stuff really interesting. He's going to present in 2015 um, uh, the beginning and end of, of ancient Israel and the beginning and end of modern Israel. That's going to be the series he presents. And um, obviously I'm presenting uh, Islam at that camp meeting. So the study is dealing with Islam. <clears throat> now there's a bunch of other things going on at that time in 2015. Uh, we're talking about the, um, the seven last seven kings of Judah, as well as the first seven kings of Persia. And all of those ideas are being formulated, which are going to lead to, um, in uh, the end of 2015, beginning of 2016, the Trump prediction. And um, so that's just giving a little bit of background on this history. The point is, what we're marking here is the truths that are unfolded that um, lead to the refutation of Parminder's understanding of time and also to the July 18, 2020 prediction. Right. So, so that's what's happening in that history. Now, so we have these all on a line like this. We can see that the seven years obviously precedes the 777 days. But when we look at them as separate lines, so we go here first, to um, Jotham's line. The problem that I'm having is when we put them on top of each other. And, and so we got Jotham here and, and Abimelech here. We can see that, that they are running parallel with each other, even though they're occurring at different times. And that is what's being revealed in this history is going to relate to the way marks in this history. Okay, so that's the that's the idea, but they're they're not obviously happening at the same time. So when we look at this, when we look at Abimelech's downfall, for instance, and we're looking at these different verses that we're placing here, we can see in the formalization of the message in this line, which is Jotham's line, we're looking at nine verse four. And so we're saying that nine verse four is um, June 22nd. That's where Ezra seven, nine is, um, that's the camp meeting where it's gonna be clearly laid out that the first day of the fifth month is August 15th in 1844. And um, and then we're going to have this symbol here of June uh, 22nd, 2011, because that's going to be the three-year anniversary in which this $165,000 is donated. And I wrote here that 264 times 624 plus 264 equals 165,000. 
right? So I, I didn't have that in the study. I put that on, I think, afterwards, or maybe I did put it in. I can't remember. But anyway, I have that there. Um, and then we can also see then if we if we line this up, this is in 2014 that we have this presentation. But when we look at this history, it's going to line up with April 26th when I send Jeff the email in 2019. So, you know, I probably should put slash 19 here. Um, so I email him about this failed prediction. And, and the question is, well, how does this relate to the idea below? And what we're, we're doing is we can see that this symbol, this anniversary, this three-year anniversary of this um, money being received is it uses this symbol of 264 of April 26th. Now, uh, just a note here, um, this date, December 21st, 2012, is exactly center of um, these two dates, June 22nd, 2011, and June 22nd, 2014, right? So if I take these two dates, December 21st is the center of that. So you can see how this relates to this Mayan date, right? And, you know, we probably need to do this too, 13, right? That's the Mayan date there of December 21st, which is 1,872,000 days between August 11th, 3113 on the Gregorian calendar, that's in the past, and and this date, right? Does that make sense to people what I'm talking about? So can you see how this all fits together? So then, so if this is the case in Jotham's line, when we get to this, this line here, we can see how this April 26, 2019 email regarding the failed prediction would match this, this line, right? Because it's on April 26th, I send Jeff this email. And unintentionally, you know, I have no thought about what the date is. I'm just saying to Jeff, you know, we have this because I found it out. We had a study and um, I did a video on it on, on the Friday. And then I send Jeff the email. So back in 2019, uh, April 26th was, uh, it was the Friday. And I, I'm not sure if I did the video that day and sent it to him. I can't remember if I sent it to him prior to the video or not, but I sent it to him that day. And I think I probably did the study that night. I'd have to look it up. Um, I don't know if I did the study on the 19th and then sent him to him a week later. But um, the point was I understood that there's this line of failed predictions and I send it to him April 26th. Do people agree that that makes sense, that we can now out have confirmation that these two lines are parallel to each other. I believe your premise is logical. Okay. So now the, the next way mark is um, going to be when I discover the 26th day of the fourth month, or not when I discover, but when I first present it, I'm actually going to figure it out. Um, I don't know how long I could probably try to find my original notes on this study. Um, but as I'm working through this study on Revelation 9, I now have the ability 
to look at the biblical dates, right, in 2015. I'd, I'd worked through enough that I'd started uh, to be able to count what the bibl biblical dates were. And uh, so when I look at, and, and I'm using, uh, I think, mostly just Skyview Cafe, um, which is a uh, ephemeris uh, program. And, and so I noticed that in uh, July 27th, 1299 is the 26th day of the fourth month. And that is also the case in 1840, July 27th is the 26th day of the fourth month. But the first one is a Julian date. The next one is a Gregorian date. And at that time, when I looked at uh, in 1449, so after the 150 years, and I looked at July 27th, I, I looked at the, because I, I didn't, I just had the Julian date, which the 26th day of the fourth month lined up with July 18, right? So July 18 is the 26th day of the fourth month in 1449. Did it mean anything to me? But I did write it in, in the paper, in my notes. Um, but I didn't think about what the Gregorian date was on the 26th day of the fourth month. And it was July 27th. I wasn't that concerned with it, though. I was just looking at mostly at the start and the end. So the 541 years, right? 150 plus the 391. So that's what I'm going to present in 2015. So if that's the case, when I look at um, this here, the date that we have is July 10th. That's what we had placed as the empowerment of this message. Now, this date is um, the date that was produced by the Mayan calendar in connection with Revelation 9. So it, it's, the, it's the study that I present on November 9th, right? So on November 9th, 2019, I'm going to present this study of the 273. Now that study of the 273 gives a July 10th as the center of a chiasm. So I'm going to present that on November 9th. Now, so I'm just saying that when we get to July 10th, which is a symbol of the 10th day of the seventh month, that that's the empowerment. But we don't have an event that I know of on July 10th, 2020, right? I don't know of any any event. I just I just have that as a waymark. Now maybe that's not the best waymark to place there. Or or the best date to place for that waymark. But that was the logic we, we used when we drew out this line the first time because that's where we have this line here. Uh, is it there? Uh, somewhere. It must have been on this line. Yeah, this line. We had July 10th, 2020. So is there some other date that we would use? I mean, we could, in, instead of July 10th, we could have put... Um, Okay, Iran says that was a date of one of Dan's presentations. Okay, so he's going to do a presentation on July 10th. Now, July 10th is um, a Friday, right? Because the 11th is in 2020. The 11th is a, is a, a Sabbath. So he did a presentation. Uh, you know, I might have been looking at the wrong year. So that's 2021. You're talking about 2020. Oh, I'm talking about 2020. Yeah. So you're saying he did a presentation in 2021. In 2021, where did he do the presentation? 
Actually, you know what? This might have the wrong date on it. But this couldn't be 2021, I don't think. I don't know. I'm just confused by these numbers here. Okay. Okay. So what I have in when I search, um, I have like I did a, a Friday night Zoom study on July 10th, um, which was uh, questions. It was entitled. Um, hmm. um. Yeah, there I'm going to deal with. I'm just looking at what I do on that study. Yeah. So, so anyway, I don't. I don't really have an event for it. I mean, I'm going to do a study then, but it's a Friday night. I'm always doing these studies. Um. Okay. Address a lot of things there. Just um, interesting. Okay. For the one F, you have April twenty six nineteen. That should be April April one twenty twenty. Oh yeah. Sorry about that. You're correct. Yeah, so that's 20, April 26, 2020. Right. And um, so anyway, we're lining up these, these lines here. So the, the 26th day of the fourth month, that's going to be connected. So... Um, So we're saying there's an empowerment. Now, you know, it could be some other date. I mean, I don't know. You know, you could put July 4th there. I mean, July 4th is just the end of the 100 days. But the reason why I put July 10th is because it is the date that's related, uh, that's discovered on November 9th, or not discovered, but presented on November 9th at the School of the Prophets. And then we're going to have this formalization that is the email dealing with this failed prediction. Now, the only reason I can do that is give this presentation or find this truth is because what Jeff had presented regarding the Levitical chiasm. So without the Levitical chiasm, I don't have a basis to look for uh, a chiasm with the 777 days, right? And we know that that this uh, this April 26, 2020 email is the one that's going to tie that whole structure together, right? But what I discover there that I present is this June 10th date, right? That's what I present on November 9th, and 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 that leads to. All of these things that happen with Jeff presenting the Levitical chiasm. And then we have, um, so I presented on November 9th. We have the Levitical chiasm. Then we have the 26th of April email, which gives us this date as the center, right? And that's going to go from October 11th, uh, 2019, 273 days to July 10th, 2020. And then another 273 days um, to, uh, it's going to be, I'm trying to point it where it is. It, I know it's going to be March 27th um, on the Julian calendar. So that's April, April 9th, 
I think it is, or April 8th, I can't remember, um, 2021, right? So if you count 273 days from this date, it'll give you the other date, which I, it's 8 or 9th, April 8 or 9th, 2021. So uh, the point is that I'm marking this date but and saying it's an empowerment, but we don't have an event. Is that okay? It's just a symbolic date. Do we have to have an event to have a waymark? Now, the next day, we're going to have Jeff's last two presentations. Any, any comments on this, whether we can do this or not? Do we have to tie it to... Well, the only, I'm sorry, Theodore. The only thing I can think of is July 10th is like the 10th day of the seventh month. Right. So, so we have it there as a symbol, right? It's the center here. But we're saying it's an empowerment. And no, normally an empowerment is some kind of event, right? And And the only thing that we have is... You know, I do a study, but, you know, I'm always doing studies Friday nights. And, and sure, I mentioned some of these things like the Levitical chiasm and, and uh, the prophetic mirror and things like that. But, you know, I do that on a lot of different days. So to call it an empowerment, to me, seems a little bit weak. Now, we could just say the next day, July 11th, when Jeff does his last two presentations before July 18th, that July 10th um, on the biblical calendar, um, you know, July 11th begins at sunset, though, you know, sunset's going to be pretty late after my study is already over. Um, so my study wouldn't be connected to that, but we could just say, well, July 10th, the end of July 10th, <coughs> the beginning of July 11th is going to mark that last week before July 18th, and Jeff's going to give his two presentations. So do we need to do that? Because you guys need to be satisfied with this, and maybe there's something that I'm not seeing. These are just, you know, this is our study together. I mean, we're having studies that are presented or messages that are presented. Okay, so Angela says, um, I think the original purpose of the olive fig and vine are representations of true prophecies and their misapplications are leaving their divinely intended purposes to reign, be accepted by those preferring false interpretations. The bramble can represent false applications, doctrines, the majority accept. Still, we can echo a triumphal cry of Habakkuk 3, verse 17 to 18. So what we are arguing, so what Angela is saying there, and what we understood before is that when we take these lines and... Um, We look at these waymarks, 
that are here, where we would mark these as, as messages. That is the first, second, and third angel's message, right? The all of the fig and the vine. Correct. Okay. And so here, uh, we would put the olive, right? Here, we would put the fig. I think that's the order they come in. And here we had put the vine. But then it's going to be followed by the bramble, right? So we're saying that the bramble is this misapplication of these messages. Okay. Now you can see that we're placing the, these here in Abimelech's line because Jotham's parable Jotham's parable we have Jotham's line now I didn't put them on Jotham's line I put them on Abimelech's line because Jotham he is prophesying about Abimelech's downfall what's going to bring about Abimelech's downfall Right? And we can see in each of these dates, these predictions, there is this offer made by this message, right? This message of Abimelech is being offered all along this line. But the all of the fig and the vine are going to reject this offer. But the bramble will take it up. And if we look at Jotham's line as this message regarding how chronology should be done, we even find this with November 9th, right? There's a message given by Parminder and Tess, for instance, regarding November 9th. But chronology witnesses against November 9th as being the close of probation. That is, all through this, what the chronology shows is that we can't make these events what we want to make them. We want to make them the events, the actual events that are prophesied on Ellen White's line. But these are typical. Our line is typical. So the olive rejects that, right? It's, it's a rejection of what Parminder and Tess are doing with November 9. And then the fig, the fig is going to reject because it's going to show it's a failed prediction. It's showing this rejection of this idea that July 18th is going to be what people expect it to be. And, and the same thing occurs with December 25th, 2021, because here we're going to have uh, Colin's presentation. But we can see that this, this chronology is going to reject his presentation, his conclusion, even though there's truth there that needs to be studied. Just as, as there is with July 18th, just as there is with November 9th, right? But finally, it's going to be picked up by the bramble. And so this message of time setting connect, is connected with the bramble, is the time setting that is going to be developed in connection with Collins' prediction and, and Odilio's. Now, I understand the temptation. Right. I understand why people want to see events happening right now. We want to see Jesus return. There's nothing wrong with that. But we have to follow the pattern in Millerite history. And we know that we have made the same mistakes as the Millerites. And, and we believe that Ellen White's counsel, given in early writing 74, addresses specifically the situation this movement is at present. So she knows that people are time setting and they want to go back to old Jerusalem. And those are symbols, right? Because we still have time in this movement, right? So time isn't, isn't the issue. The issue is what we're doing with time. What it is we're saying to go back to old Jerusalem is to apply something literally that should be applied spiritually. And the Millerites made the same mistake. So 
it doesn't make us evil or anything that we we do that. Um, now, so Angela put seven eleven divided, or or seven times eleven, I guess is what she has there. It's not a divided seven times eleven. So she's got seven eleven is seven times eleven, which is seventy seven. So when we look at this uh, chronology, so I'm just gonna. Bring this up here in a second. Now, when we did Judges 6-3, we put Judges 7, verse 10 to 11 as July 10th and 11th. So we put those two together. And um, I'll show you this diagram. Here it is. <clears throat> so this is the diagram where is this the one? Yeah. So we have October eleventh, two thousand nineteen, here at the bottom, and we have the two hundred and seventy three days brings us to July tenth, twenty twenty, and then two hundred and seventy three days to April 9th, Gregorian, which is March twenty seventh, Julian, right? So we have these. Two days. Now, this was produced uh, by this study. So, in this study here, I had taken uh, the 391 years, which is 142,810 days, and I had taken the back tomb. So, I had counted from uh, July 27th, 1449, and I had counted this back tomb study, right? And I found that it ended up being 1,190 days longer than this. And gave me the state October 30th, 1843. And, but that wasn't the important part. The important part was taking this calculation. So there's 12 periods of 11,900 days. Technically, it's 11,900 days and 1190 minutes or yeah minutes um each of these to add up to this because the 1190 minutes gives us this uh extra days at the end here these 10 days um and then what i did is i took this calculation i took 142,810 and i divided it by 12 right so that is i'm going to get these periods of time here and and then I multiplied it by five, and that is, I'm using the five as a symbol of a half. And then I added that uh, to um, 142,810 days divided by 10, divided by 12. So I'm going to take one tenth of that to make these shorter periods. And multiplied by five, and I get 65,454 days. That leads me from July, uh, um, yeah, July 27th, uh, 1840, to uh, it's going to be here to October 11th, 2019. And then that's going to be 273 days to July 10th, right? And if I take the Mayan calendar and use the same date, so instead of 142,810, I have 144,000 days. I use the same calculation. I get 66,000 days. So I count that, that brings me to April 9th, 2021. So the 273 days on either side is that symbol of 273. This is what I present on November 9th. 2019. I present this study, the center of which is July 10th. Now, we could say um, that when we look at something like this, whether we're starting at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day. So even though we have July 10th, can we say that this is July 10th and 11th, that both of those dates are relevant? 
And then we would have an event. The event we would have is Jeff's last two presentations. So this July 10th would be July 10th and 11th, 2020. So if that's the case, then we could modify this to July 10th and 11th. Let me just pick this 10th and 11th, 2020. Is that acceptable? So Jeff's going to do his two presentations. And those two presentations was uh, Daniel Levin. Well, he's going to be dealing with um, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what he talks about in those two studies because uh, he's dealing with with faith, right? Um, yeah, he talks about uh, do not um, the one the Hebrews do not sort of uh, turn back from. Uh, I don't remember it myself, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah. yes, from Hebrews, I think it's chapter ten or something or eleven. Yeah, Hebrews. Yeah, from the book of Hebrews, and and so um, the idea there, though, is in, in some ways he's sort of suggesting that the prediction is going to fail. Right. I mean, he's not saying that explicitly, but just that we have to have faith. We can't turn back. Um, so that's my understanding of it. So he's, you know, he's. He's allowing for the fact that the prediction could fail. But he's not he's not doing as clear studies as I did when I said, you know, that we're on a line of failed predictions. But anyway, we, here we have July 18th, right? That is gonna be the arrival of the second message. So here on July 18, um, 2020, right? That's, we're saying that this second message arrives. And this second message arrives based upon the idea that this is a failed prediction. That is, I have. The, uh, what's that? Yeah, uh, sorry. So Hebrews 10, verse 23, let us hold fast our profession. Right. Yeah, so Hebrews 10, verse 23, that's what Jeff is going to present on. And, and of course, to present that message, I mean, whether the prediction fails or not, it's still applicable, but it's definitely much more applicable. Um, with the failure of the prediction. So, so we can see that in order to, because remember when we have a message, you have to accept that message in order to be benefited by the preceding message. So that first message is necessary if you're going to accept the message that it comes on July 18th. And that message is, we have experienced a disappointment. We have paralleled Millerite history, that this was a failed prediction, but God is still leading us. And that we had two options. The option is, well, there's three, but, you know, the option is we had the correct time. That time was correct, July 18, 2020. But the event that we were predicting was not to be there. It's not its time for that event. But there was nothing wrong 
in predicting that time and predicting that event, just as the Millerites predicted the second coming of Christ on October 22, 1844, and he didn't come. We didn't say, well, they had the wrong time, so we need to set a different date. That's what most of the Millerites did. Well, you know, he didn't come, so we must have had the wrong time. But not the wrong event, right? So they, they're not looking for this event that the Adventists, Seventh-day Adventists, come to understand, which is that Christ began his work of judgment and moved from the holy to the most holy place. Now, what we are understanding here in my paper after July 18, uh, the main point that I make is that we are paralleling Millerite history. And um, the dis disappointment was necessary. And, um, it, and we understand the lines differently. That is, my understanding of the lines all through this history is I understood our line was typical. When we had time setting in 2018, I was opposed to the idea that people were looking for these specific events to be the events of the bigger line. That is, I didn't fully understand yet how to sort that through. I just knew that that wasn't correct. November 9th would not be the close of probation. But people were looking at it as a close of probation, that we have this staggered series of closes of probation that are our actual closes of probation. So the let him that is righteous be righteous still would apply to November 9th. And I oppose that idea, right? Because we can't predict those events. Ellen White's statements are really clear. And, and I wasn't willing to set aside her statements on time setting. So the only way that I could justify setting time is that we're in a typical line. So that was my position. Okay, and and that seemed to be correct as we've passed through this time. That's what we have seen. We're on a typical line, and we now have an explanation for that in understanding the lines from the past. Now, um, just getting back to the scriptures here. So we we've looked at this. Now we're saying that this is the empowerment, but we and we need to find the scriptures that are going to confirm this so we had 9 verse 4 being lining up with april 26 2020 and june 22nd 2014 uh, what verse are we going to use in judges uh, to help us with these other way marks So we're going to have, um, so here we have the July 10th and 11th now, and I guess we would look at this one. So we, and we didn't deal with this too, July 17th. So, so this empowerment here, uh, where we get the symbol of 26th day of the fourth month, and this empowerment here that we mark as July 10th and 11th, or July 10th. 11th more specifically what are the verses that's what we have to because it's fine to put something on on a line and say that this is a line but we need the witness from the scriptures so if we go on from 9 verse 4 we get 9 verse 5 and he went unto his father's house at Oprah and slew his brethren the sons of Jeroboam being three score and ten persons upon one stone, notwithstanding, Jotham, the youngest son of Jeroboam, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together in all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. They told it Jotham to Jotham, and he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim, and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. And then he's going to give this parable. The trees went forth on a time to anoint over them. And they said unto the olive tree, reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, should I leave my fatness wherewith 
by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees. So we're saying that that applies to November 9th, right? The olive, right? And the tree said to the fig tree, come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the tree, so obviously the fig tree is going to reject that. Then said the trees unto the vine, come thou reign over us. And the vine said unto them, should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, if in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now, therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely in that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jeroboam and his house and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian, and ye are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons, threescore and ten persons upon one stone, and have made Abimelech the son of the maid, his maidservant king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If ye have dealt truly and sincerely with Jeroboam and with his house this day, then rejoice, King Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, and let them come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo, and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. So here we have this account, and we're saying that this is this is the line of Jotham, but it applies to the, lot, the downfall of Abimelech, right? Because we, we have these two parallel lines. Now, what are the symbols uh, that we can we can use here? So one of the things we see that that we have to address is we do have 9-7, and we say that 9-7 is September 9th, right? So this, this par parable is going to go, and it's going to talk, or September 9th, September 7th, that's what I meant to say. Thanks. So it's September 7th, right? And, and this is going to be Jotham standing on, on Mount Gerizim. So this is this message, this parable of Jotham. He's going to stand on Mount Gerizim while uh, Abimelech is being made king. So we know that this message of Abimelech is tied to Parminder, his message. But that message is going to go all the way through. So Parminder doesn't really end on November 9th. I mean, he does. But his message, his method of study continues. People are still going to be taking what he taught. Um, it also can be 7-7, seven seven, as it was the seventh month at one time, September 7th, right? So um, but we're saying that this is September 7th, 2019, that Abimelech, is being made king, and Jotham stands upon the top of Mount Gerizim, the Mount of Blessing, right? So, so that's how we understood this. And we have this Gerizim representing uh, this symbol that Adelia finds later, because 1629 is where Gerizim comes from. And he's going to be talking to the men of Shechem. The men of Shechem are making a false covenant, right? That covenant that's made in Parminder's movement, that covenant still continues. And then it says the trees are going to appeal to the olive. So Angela says Isaiah 8, 6 to 16 with Jotham's curse are followers of Abimelech. Um, uh, so she's talking about... Uh, Here. 
So Isaiah 8, verse 6. So this is talking about the Assyrian invasion. Okay, so this is going to be um, when they take a Remaliah. Um, Remaliah is, is the king, right, of, of Judah. Uh, let me see here. No, pardon me. I'm getting this. Okay. So never mind. My brain just went the wrong direction. So this is, this is, um, uh, he's the king of, of northern Israel. And the king of Judah is Ahaz, right? So this is just going to be, um, I mean, this is dealing with the start of the 2520, right? This is dealing with that history, Isaiah 7, the 65 years, and so forth. Um, so how does this apply? Angela? Well, it just says they refuse the waters of Shiloh, so they don't want the peace of God. They want warfare. They want infighting, and mm. they're cursed. They've been broken in pieces. You know, they have conspire, but be broken. So I thought there was a parallel there. Okay. Um, it could be. I mean, it's interesting. It talks about, uh, he, he, and he shall be a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling. Right. And for a of offense. Right. So, I mean, the slaying them upon one, 70 upon one stone. I mean, obviously this refers to the counterfeit. Right. But exactly. You don't know exactly how to apply it. Um, so anyway, when we go back here, um, and we're going to have the first, the olive. So the olive is going to be, we're saying that that applies to November 9th, that first message. So you got September 7th, and then you have, uh, November 9th, right? But the fig tree is going to be the one referred to at 11-9, uh, right? The 11th verse of Judges 9. So you have this olive is going to lead you up to that verse. 11-9 uh, is going to be the period of the fig tree, right? So that's going to be, that's going to lead you from 11.9 to July 18. And then you're going to have the vine, right? This is the study of doctrine that's going to lead you to um, December 25th, 2021. And then in December 25th, 2021, you're going to have the period of the bramble, right? And that's going to end on 920. Right. So 920. So it's it's like these are um so we're gonna say that this first part <clears throat> is all eleven nine leading. <clears throat> it's almost like in reverse. Then when we go from eleven nine, that's gonna give us July eighteenth. Um, does that make sense to people? That, that's how we're going to take this. So, so we have a message. Um, so, <clears throat> so we have a message here that uh, we're going to start with these verses. So technically, the olive, um, we're going to just start right with the whole parable itself. We'll do it like this. We'll go 9, verse 7 to 10. And that's going to be um, Let 
with this one. Okay, does that make sense to people, what I did there? So I took those verses from when he gets up onto Mount Gerizim, September 7th, and I'm going to say that 7 to 10 are going to lead us to 11.9. And then we would do the same with the fig. We're going to go here. Um And let me see if I, I get it this correctly. Yeah. And then the fig is going to uh, just be 911. So that's the verse that we have. But this is going to be this history from 911 to July 18th. Does that make sense? Since you're, nobody's opposing this, you must accept it. That's my assumption. <clears throat> and then we're going to have, uh, leading up to this, is you're going to have 9.12, which is going to be dealing with the vine. And you're going to have 9.12 and 13. 9.12 and 13 are going to address the vine. And that's going to be from July 18. So I'll do it the same way I did there. Um, July That means we have to place the bramble on this line as well. So just to do this, we would just add this, this bramble. So that's the fourth angel arriving. This is the eighth way mark. And just copying this. So we're going to say that this is twelve. 25, 21, 2, January, so to this way, 1, 3. This is going to be the bramble. And that's going to be those verses from 9.14 to 9.20. Okay, so I know I got this all... 
mixed in. But you can see what I'm saying here, that this period of time that leads to November 9th is from September 7th to, to November 9th. And that's Judges 9, 7 to 10. Right? It's going to address Mount Gerizim, which is September 7th. And then this olive is going to be November 9th. Right? And then we're going to say that the fig tree is marked by the verse 911, and it starts at 119 and goes to July 18th. Right. So, so we're just taking that parable and placing it here on this line. Right. And the same with the vine, July 18th to December 25th, 2021. <clears throat> And we still have the problems with these verses um, as far as getting the, the verse, for instance, for the July 18th, the 26th day of the fourth month. Um, even though we call this Jotham's line, right, it's not directly the parable. Now, we could maybe apply the parable here and we, we could try that, you know, uh, tomorrow and see if we could do something with that because it's going to relate. So however we do it, but just with what we've done here, if we're going to say that this is uh, July 17th in 2015, and that this aligns with July 11th, or 10th and 11th in 2020, uh, how do we do that? And what verses are we going to use? So anybody have any ideas on how we're going to take this? So when we look at the verses, we had 9 verse 4. Going back here, 9 verse 4, we had is the formalization. Now, the next step is the slaying of these three score and ten persons upon one stone. And Jotham surviving. So how do we relate? Can we take 9 verse 5? And take symbolism that's that is here, and place it at at these waymarks, the empowerment of the first message. So if we did this, if we said this is nine verse five, that that's the empowerment of the first message. What would be our basis for doing this? And we would also put nine verse five here. And, and we have these symbols, the 26th day of the fourth month and the 10th day of the seventh month that, that we're tying to these. So what ties these together? How does this verse address the empowerment of the first message in Jotham's and Abimelech's line?
So Bimelech is going to, um, he hires these vain and light persons, right? That was verse four. And we have this set three score pieces of silver. Now we're saying that the death of these 70 persons, excepting the one that is left, that this is the empowerment. So if we remember that uh, the formalization had to do with in Jotham's line, with June 22nd, 2014, and the understanding of Ezra 7, 9. And, and that's going to be the 26th day of the fourth month that's going to be attached to that with the $165,000 that's going to parallel to the April 6, 20 email of the failed prediction. So now we're going to have Jeff doing two presentations. And his presentation is going to be based upon um, not falling away right, um, <clears throat> in Hebrews 10. All right, so 10.23, right, that verse, hold fast the profession of faith without wavering. Right, and if you, and it, and if you read this whole section, uh, it's going to talk about Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Now, uh, this here in the context is just the sanctuary. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our, our faith without wavering, and he that is faithful that promised. And let us consider uh, one another uh, pro and provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as we, you see the day approaching. Right. And then he's going to go dealing with the old covenant for if we sin, sin willfully after we received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, referring under the old covenant. Right. That is, if you did, um, if you sin willfully, there's no sacrifice for willful sin in the sanctuary service. But a fearful, uh, certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. He's that despised Moses' law died without the mercy under two or three witnesses. And then he shows if you reject the new covenant, this is even worse because you reject all possibility of forgiveness. So even though it was terrible under Moses' law, it's worse if you reject the new covenant. If you reject the old covenant, it's much worse to reject the new covenant. So he's just contrasting the two and comparing them. Okay, so so that's that's the study that Jeff does. And we're saying that that is implying that there's a possibility this prediction would fail. Now, Jeff had said that, that there was a possibility, and he used different examples. He used the story of Jonah, for instance. Um you know, the two main things that he sort of compared July 18 to that I can think of is, is the story of Jonah and also of the story of Abraham offering up Isaac, these two different elements of, of how our faith was being tested. <clears throat> but in Jonah's case, his, fail, his prediction fails, right? And, and that was the case with us as well. So if we're going to take these verses, how are we going to do that? But in Jonah's case, did the prediction really fail? Not really, but it did in Jonah's eyes. Right. right. In Jonah's eyes. Yeah. Yeah, because did the Millerites' prediction fail? In the Millerites' eyes, yes. Millerites' eyes, right. 
Did July 18 fail? In some people's eyes, it did. Yes. But we know it didn't fail, right? We had a misapprehension, which was necessary. That is, if we would have known that nothing was going to happen on July 18th, we would not have given a warning. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I don't think it actually took 40 years. I, I've looked into that. I find that's, no evidence. That's that what that. Ellen White says. She says 40 years. He says, he says it was 40 years? Yeah. Okay. I, she would get that. I've looked into what she said before, and I think because um, the judgment doesn't come 40 years later. We know that. Nineveh isn't destroyed 40 years after Jonah's prediction, his prophecy. Um, I think uh, she does mention 40 years was the time of probation that was added. But it doesn't mean that at the end of that exactly is going to be, Nineveh is going to be destroyed. At the end, exactly at the end, then 40 years. But it just means it's now into a period where it could be destroyed again. Right. Um, yeah, because I looked into that before, but it was a long time ago. Um, Yeah, so the statement, uh, the warning message of Jonah uh, um, was, the, oh, oh, pardon me, this is, uh, the warning message of John was this, in the same lines as the warning of, to Nineveh, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Um, so she says, 40 years of probation was granted them in which to reveal the genuineness of their repentance and turn from sin. But Nineveh turned again to the worship of images. Her iniquity became deeper and more desperate than before because the light had come and not been heated. Yeah. So it's going to be this period of probation. But it's not going to be 40 years later that it's destroyed. Unless there's some part of history we don't know about. Because um, it's going to be quite a bit later. Okay, so anyway, that's just addressing uh, the idea that Jonah's prediction, his his days, 40 days, represented 40 years as a period of probation. Right. The point that we're making here is that God throughout biblical history and through sacred history has had people making predictions that appeared not to succeed, but were still in God's providence in leading. And, and some people would just say, well, you know, God is deceiving us then. Right? That would be sort of the argument. And because that's really the argument that was made. If we accept that God was leading this movement and Nashville isn't destroyed, then, you know, God has deceived us. Right? So they took a position. We were just wrong in prediction, predicting that Nashville would be destroyed. We were wrong in our chronology. And, and that's the thing that they they attacked, right? In the December 6, 2020 uh, declaration, um, we have a group that just says we were wrong to set time. But we still have another group in this movement that really aligns with with that group, other than the fact that, um, you know, it's sort of the other extreme, I guess you might say. That is, we have the people who continually look for the fulfillment of that event. That somehow that event has to happen within some kind of time frame that we set up in order for us to be vindicated, right? Because if it doesn't happen, if we can't predict it, then, then we were wrong, right? And this happened in Millerite history. 
seven years after, in 1851, uh, they're going to have the, that Christ is going to come back in November, right? And those are people who actually accept the sanctuary message and the Sabbath who are teaching that, right? These There's other time setters too, but the ones who accept October 22, 1844 are still setting time. They still have errors. Some of them are saying we need to go back to old Jerusalem. Sister Minor is part of this group. She's not part of the other group. She's part of the group that accepts, accepts October 22. Right? So you, you see the parallel. You should be able to see the parallel. We have people who accept July 18, but they're still looking for the fulfillment within this sort of time frame that we have set. And we're saying in these studies, what we have found is that our history is typical and we can't predict those events when they will occur. We can't predict the timing of these events. And what we're being pointed to is our present duty, which is what Ellen White was pointing them to. They had to publicate, publish the Review and Herald, right? They had, well, the present truth, it was originally called, right? They have a work to do in warning the world. And you can see that if, if Christ is just coming back in 1851, um, you would be under the impression, well, probation's already closed. We just have this testing time for these seven years, but Christ is going to come back. They don't really have a message to give a warning to the world. Um, Sister Maya, of course, thinks, you know, some Jews are going to accept the message. So we need to go to old Jerusalem and plant oranges. But uh, the point is we have, we have a parallel in our time, right? Taking something literal, that should be understood symbolically and spiritually. And the idea that Trump has to become president and bring in the Sunday law is the rejection of our message. And we should be able to see that. But presently, many people can't. They see it as the solution. You know, we need to have this happen. And maybe Nashville is going to happen before that. that. Nashville will be the event that will get Trump back into power, you know, or, or bring in the Sunday law after he is in power or whatever, right? Sounds like another disappointment coming. Well, yeah. And so... But we know that that can't be the case based upon how we've studied these lines. Right. Because the work has to be done first. To be looking for, you know, this great harvest that's going to come after these events. Well, that that's putting the cart before the horse. Because we're, we're definitely not to midnight yet on Jeff's line. We're still before midnight. And we can say January 6th, uh, 2021 is raffia, but not on Jeff's line. Right? It's something that's typical of what's going to happen. And all Jeff was talking about, as we understand, is that when he was saying Trump was the last president of the United States, that is within this line. Not the big line that he had, but within this other line that we came into, which has time attached to it. And until that line is over, until our time is passed, we won't be into that, that actual history, even though we're, we're still in the history of the Sunday law, typically. And that's, that's what we're teaching. That's what all of these studies on the lines are showing. So um, we, we're going to look at Tomorrow, we're going to look at 9 verse 5, and we can see how we can attach this to those waymarks in the line of 
Jotham and in the line of Abimelech. So there are some symbols here that we can use. And, and we need to understand uh, a bit more about this um, making Abimelech king and the symbolisms that's, that, are, that is there as well. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Okay, well, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, for all your blessings. And we ask, Lord, that um, you can be with each person. May your angels watch over them. Thank you for the things that we learn in this study. And um, we pray that we can come together tomorrow to continue this study. Receive light from your hand. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>